Hello wonderful viewer, welcome to mission 4 for the Terran Brood War campaign. We'll go ahead and hop straight in as Insanity Bot will be taking on the Assault on Korhal. So this mission is another fairly straightforward one. Uh, we are facing two Terran uh, AIs, uh, a red AI as well as a blue AI. The objective for this mission is we have to push to one of two objectives which, uh, depending on which one we choose to complete, will set up a version of map 5 that we will uh, play. So we have the option of going to the top right corner and killing the physics facilities that Red owns, or going to the bottom right and killing the nuclear missile silos that Blue owns. And depending on which one you choose to destroy, uh, we'll determine which version of map 5 we play. So, we're going to choose to attack the physics facilities as the battlecruiser version of Mission 5 is significantly harder than the nuclear missile version of Mission 5. Uh, I'll explain more when we get there, but basically, battlecruisers are a lot tankier units, and he seems to attack a lot more with the battlecruisers rather than uh, launching nuclear missiles. You really only get nuked like once or twice in the mission after the initial start, so destroying the physics facility makes the next mission significantly easier. So at the start here, we're just going to save up to uh, build a couple more SCVs, we'll save up to 400 minerals, we're going to go over here, snag this expansion. You'll notice our uh, offensive units are kind of clustering here. Uh, that is because they are choosing a halfway point between what's considered our, our natural choke point up here and our main base, so they will just plant themselves in this rough area, which isn't too terrible as they're able to siege up and defend any attack that comes from the, uh, comes for the natural expansion while also being able to come down and rapidly respond to, you know, any attacks on the main base. Uh, we do have a pair of wraiths which are not utilized as Insanity Bot does not have logic inside of it to handle wraiths. I, I've never built them for uh, competitive multiplayer, and therefore these just kind of sit here as passive guardians. They'll shoot and you know hunt down units that come by them, but for the most part they they're not uh, really active participants. Uh, you'll see the marines being brought over because the bunker is being built, and yeah, again we're just gonna build up our economy slowly, build up our ground forces until we really hit our stride. Uh, fortunately, this mission has quite a significant number of minerals in the main base and two gas geysers that we can utilize. And that is the wrong music. Hold on a second. <laughs> Alright, that's fixed. Alright, we're good. <laughs> I apologize. I set that to loop, but I uh, looped the Terran music playlist, but it went ahead and chose something else. Alright, so first ga uh, refinery is up. Adding on more SCVs, adding on another commsat station for scans. Scans will matter more in these later missions as the enemy will actively have cloaked or burrowed units. Um, but between commsat stations and science vessels, our detection's pretty well handled. Uh, there is a funny thing that can happen at the very start of this mission. Uh, when we're initially saving up for our expansion, if the if Insanity Bot chooses this particular worker that's mining this mineral field, and it chooses him to build the expansion right at the moment where these two SCVs are kind of overlapping, what'll happen is it's, uh, it'll cause the collision avoidance to kick in, and if you don't know what that is, that's just basically when units are able to kind of glitch through normally impassable you know, terrain or structures or other units. Uh, here you can see the, the worker defense coming in a little bit while the Aegis squad was making its way over. Lost a couple of SCVs, but not too big a deal, just delay us a little bit. But yeah, so if if the SCV is called to build the natural when these guys are overlapping, what'll happen is it'll start glitching through the minerals as it's trying to path over to the natural, and it'll end up getting stuck behind these minerals uh, and that will cause a reset to happen on this map as 
it never will build its natural expansion because it'll keep selecting this worker over and over again because it's the closest to the target, but it is stuck uh, and it doesn't realize that. So that that can happen. It, it happens only like one out of every ten times this map is run. Uh, so it's it's rare enough that I didn't bother like hard coding a fix in for it, um, but it doesn't happen often enough for me to, you know, stress over it happening or not. Just one of the the many joys and strange occurrences you'll see in developing. Building up our economy. Uh, the units coming up to gather. We will probably snag. The siege mode ability relatively soon after we're done building like a, a depot and then yeah there we go have that siege mode underway after siege mode we'll start tacking on additional factories uh, in preparation for our economy and being in full swing so the when our bot decides to move out unfortunately it kind of gets tends to get stuck on this uh, coastline right here that's because it sees these buildings like right across the river and so the siege tanks will come down uh, ready to move out but then you know see the enemies right there and then like siege up and then unfortunately blue isn't smart enough to like uh, realize that its structures are within siege range and so it'll keep building these buildings or like this refinery and our siege tanks will continue to shell across the river and that'll just kind of slow down our push out until pretty much we hit max supply and then we'll make a massive push to the top right corner. Uh, there's enough minerals in our home uh, and natural where we'll probably finish this mission before Insanity Ball has to expand but if it does need to expand it'll come over to this base uh, that's just protected by a bunker and uh, a couple of Goliaths. Ah yes, and here we have the ghost coming in with lockdown. Uh, so fortunately the ghost in and of itself does not do like any damage to mechanical units, but its lockdown ability lasts for a long, long time. And if any other units are, you know, assisting in, in shooting the lockdown units, they can die very quickly. So Typically, blue will just triple in one or two ghosts at a time. There are occasions where they'll come in with like a full hit squad of like eight ghosts and just lock down everything that Insanity Bot owns. Uh, if that were to happen, uh, we'll probably have to rely on Insanity Bot pulling a bunch of SCVs to help defend. But for the most part, it's able to, you know, handle in the, the trickle of ghosts. And we also do lay a few spider mines within the base to kind of help catch the ghosts as they're running around. But for the most part we should be we should be fine. We'll lose a couple units here or there, but for the most part, you know, there's no real threat of us actually losing the game. It just delays our push out for a while. A couple fire bats coming in. SCV's finding fire bats, that's a that's a bad trade right there. But the Aegis squad is too busy dealing with blues and incursion to really deal with the fire bats. Um, get a tank here to assist a little bit, that's nice. Let's see the Aegis squad. Uh, the there's an invisible circle that kind of surrounds the main base that triggers the Aegis squad moving uh, to any given position. Not enough minerals. Uh, there's a tank across the river. Identify target. Um, and the circle should be just barely outside of these factories here. So ideally, Insanity Bot will pick up its tanks, move Thanks. over, and like attack this Goliath, but it may just be out of range of that invisible circle. Um, but it does look like uh, Insanity Bot is aware it's there, and it is trying to, yeah, there's a tank moving over that'll deal with the, the threat fairly easily. Yep, teching up to Starport, we've got three factories going. Uh, we only build machine shops equal to the number of refineries that we have, uh, just because if you're building more than that, odds are you're not going to be able to keep up the you know tank production. 
as you will be too low on gas to do that. I say that when it's saying about floating 2,000 gas, but but that'll that'll go down like as you know we we focus less on uh, building SCVs and more on building combat units. We've probably almost reached our saturation point for both bases, uh, and when we hit that saturation point, we'll we'll stop SCV production and we'll put everything into. Uh, combat unit production. We do get more than three factories for this mission as our economy is significantly stronger than the first mission. Uh, it's just a matter of finding the right space for it, getting a science facility so we can get uh, our science vessels out on the map, help us detect the invisible units as well as uh, having defensive matrix available. But yeah, this is the behavior I was talking about where our siege tanks like to get stuck here shelling across the river as Blue continues to try to rebuild you know, these two structures here. Oh, there's a drop shit coming in. Wow, I, I haven't seen them try to make a drop happen in the base. That's that's quite funny, actually. Fortunately, uh, we do build uh, defensive turrets around our command centers uh, to prevent things like Wraith Grass or Mutalist Grass. So fortunately, that, was, that's, that turret was there to attack that drop ship and force them to drop their units in a very inopportune position for them. Now Insanibot's gonna add more factories, it's gonna seriously uh, consider moving out and as long as the trickle of uh, you know offensive units coming in that slows down we'll be able to start sending our units out uh, towards the top right section of the map. Upgrade complete. Uh, unfortunately, this base layout isn't super convenient for a lot of like supply depots and such. It's just kind of an odd space. So we will, you'll see these supply depots just kind of continue northward as he, you know, tries to fill in where he can. And we'll, we're also adding some over here, just kind of use this space. But definitely not the easiest layout to plan for. Oh wow, that was actually a that was actually a very effective drop on Blue's side of things to like really damage our own, our tanks with that splash damage. Fortunately, I think we lost one uh, with uh, a friendly spider mine coming in and blowing everything up. I will slowly tech up to 3-3 upgrades, although we probably won't hit 3-3 before the mission is done. Uh, the mission sig definitely becomes significantly easier when we hit plus 2 weapon upgrades, as I mentioned in the first mission. Uh, plus 2 weapon upgrades allows a siege tank to two-shot an opponent siege tank in siege mode, rather than three shots, so that just makes trading with opponent. Uh, Opposing siege tanks a lot easier. But yeah, we we're pretty much under constant threat of attacks, which does make this mission uh, a little bit more interesting, and it's also uh, a little bit different from run to run as far as when units will hit, where they will hit, uh, the amount of units that enter in. So it it, it does cause for. Uh, interesting encounters but yeah so for first squad is moved up uh, we'll probably get pushed back as there are op uh, opposing siege tanks in high ground positions that are very uh, well placed uh, defensive emplacements production facilities constantly making units so this will kind of be a slow push initially but eventually uh, when our main force stops having to deal with like all of the uh, uh, you know, units attacking our base will be able to move out with a, a sizable force and hit the opponents where we want to. And yeah, this is the behavior I was talking about uh, even more, where the siege tanks will keep trying to path up to the top right corner, but they end up kind of sitting here and continuously shelling across the river. And th I think this also kind of triggers blue a little bit more as Blue will send occasional units up to try to deal with our siege tanks that are attacking it, um, but they don't send nearly enough to fully deal with, you know, what we have across the river. 
Uh, another fort's taking an alternative route, which is nice because we'll leave a nice trail of spider mines for anything trying to push back against us. Oh, you can see defensive matrix on an injured tank that probably traded out uh, the siege tank that was up on this high ground. So, uh, defensive matrix is another relatively new tech that Insanity bots utilize. It prioritizes uh, matrixing siege tanks and ghosts. Uh, specifically because ghosts I only really use to launch nuclear missiles, so if a ghost is being attacked, odds are he's laser designating a target for a nuke, uh, and thus needs to be protected. And siege tanks for obvious re reasons, usually uh, siege tanks are trying to trade with other tanks, or they're like the first tank being attacked by a Protoss army, so defensive matrix just helps uh, the siege tank last a little bit longer in those encounters. Yeah, we're moving our tank lines up slowly but surely. Our repairing SCVs are running between our squads, trying to keep every uh, tank healthy. If there are no, you know, current tanks that need repair, they'll sit for a little bit and wait. They'll usually try to rendezvous with like the closest tank to our target, but that isn't always immediate to kick in. Your forces are under attack. Identify targets. All right. Ready to yeah, we're in full production swing. Our gas is being used uh, pretty much right when we have it. We only build two science vessels for uh, our mech builds. Uh, typically, for going bio against uh, Zerg, you'll see and say about make like. You know, 12 to 16 vessels at you know any one point in time. That's because irradiate is a very powerful ability against Zerg. Uh, for TVT or TVP, it doesn't matter as much. Um, so rather than spend a, a bunch of gas on a bunch of different vessels, we we really only make two, and then just make use of like the defensive matrix ability. Uh, EMP is an important ability against Protoss as it helps defend against things like Herbiters, uh, or if there's like a cluster of High Templar. Um, it, but currently Insanity Bot doesn't have EMP logic, so uh, right now for TBT or TBP, he really only uses Defensive Matrix. So yeah, we're making our slow push, we're almost gonna hit that max supply, and when we hit that max supply you'll see this cluster of units that are sticking near the tanks just sprint forward to our objective to try to take it out. A couple of wraiths coming in. Uh, they should be close enough to trigger the Aegis squad, but our Goliaths popping out may even just be enough on their own. Goliaths are very good against wraiths. We're at 187. We have a, a very nice spread of defensive mines uh, to catch anything coming from blue. Uh, again, like like as I mentioned before, the spider mine logic isn't perfect, but it does lead to decent behavior like this, where if any enemy units were to show up trying to push down this ramp, they're going to have a very bad time doing so. Uh, we've hit that maximum supply threshold, so now we're going to be a, a little more liberal with our units as we're rushing forward. Uh, and doing and hitting that max supply also allows us to uh, reinforce units in the field. So instead of our units, our newly constructed units being assigned to new squads or squads that aren't ready to attack, instead uh, Insanity Bot will resupply the squads in the field with new units. And so everyone will just kind of sprint out to the front and try to finish the game. Uh, here are the physics labs. Uh, the Goliaths are going to have a difficult time getting around this corner as pathing is hard. But yeah, we're, we'll come up here, we'll blow all these up, and then the mission will be complete. So, all in all, uh, not a difficult mission, but certainly one uh, where it requires a lot of defensive posturing early on before you get a sizable enough force to really move out. Um, but once you do it, it the enemy just kind of folds over it. It doesn't have great production, so uh, and it still builds things like you know marine medic when really it should just be focusing on uh, mech production against uh, another mech force. But you know it's it, it's a campaign mission, so it's not like they're trying to make it you know play to the meta.
But yeah, we'll just destroy this last Terran Fizz facility and we're off to the next mission. Uh, which certainly is a fun one, so. Uh, if you've watched this video and have watched all the others, thank you again for your time. Uh, I had a lot of fun programming for these missions, so I hope you'll continue to check them out. But yeah, that's uh, this mission four in 20 minutes and three seconds. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.